Well, it's good to be here this morning. As I always say on Sunday morning, there's no other place I'd rather be than uh, at the church I belong to. This is my church. It don't belong to me, but I belong to it. Amen. So I'm thankful for the Lord this morning. Uh, let's start out with any uh, prayer requests or praise reports. of the word and but um, let's always take in consideration that nobody's promised tomorrow pray for those people and their families um, I got a couple unspoken prayer requests um, anybody else in the back I just want to thank everybody for their prayers for my manager she went through her surgery fine uh, she's uh, but I've been told she's doing well. Amen. So she's still in a little bit of pain. Her hands, you know, she's got tingling in her hands. For any time you mess with your spine, this is going to happen. But just continue to pray for her, and um, maybe she'll recover soon and come back to work. <laughs> well, that's good. And Randy and I also thank everybody for all your prayers. I know y'all pray this like a real and finally. Yes, and that's a big prayer support. Yep, I'm glad to have y'all back here. Um, and uh, I was talking with Lois, and she said, I feel like I miss so much. And it's, but we get right in the swing of things, so like, it, like as if you never missed anything. I know it. Um, um, so, anybody else with any more prayer requests or any praise reports? Praise report. My dad went to see his oncologist here Friday, and um, he will be taking chemo, and it will be the same pretty much as what he's been doing, but every three weeks. They do not anticipate any side effects because it's kind of the same stuff. So I claim that you know, yeah. he's going to be good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. That's good. We'll be praying for him moving forward, too. Yes. Hey, Chase. Yes, sir. I just need to stand up just for myself to thank everybody for the prayers and uh, Amen, everything brother. that I got. I can tell everybody was praying for me, and it's, it's working. I'm feeling a lot better. I've still got some issues to go through, but I really love my church. Yes. We love you too. We're glad you're back. Yes. 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 Um, on the back here, we got prayer request, a prayer list on the back of the bulletin. Uh, aren't y'all glad we got a bulletin again this morning? Miss <laughs> Lois does such a good job on that. Um, on the back, we have a prayer list. If there's anything you put on here and you see that that it, the prayers been answered or or no longer need to pray for them in that aspect, let us know so we can take them off because um, we, we we got. A lot more people put on there. Um, but if they still need prayer, keep them there. Um, so let's go with that. All right, well, let's open up in a word of prayer. Lord, we come to you in Jesus' name this morning. Lift these prayer requests up to you, Lord. And we thank you and we praise you for the praise reports. Lord, I ask that your will be done in your time and Father, Lord. And I pray that you'd have your hand on each of them. Lord, I pray that your hand would be on us this morning. I thank you for being interested in a small country church this morning that just wants to glorify you. I pray for the people here. Lord, I pray that you'd give me 
Uh, what I stand in need for, Lord, I pray for that unction that the old timers pray for. Father, I pray for each and every mind and heart in here. I pray for the kids in the back, Lord, that you would just bless them, Lord, and have your hand on them, Lord. And I pray, I pray for their future, Lord. I pray that you would, Lord, just help them uh, in, their, in your plans and their life, Father. I, I thank you for bringing all of us here this morning safely. Lord, if they're, uh, I pray for safety on the roadways this morning. I pray for the churches throughout the community. Lord, that I pray for salvation and restoration. Lord, I pray that you'd help us get home safely, Lord. And I pray that for a little while you'd remove any and all distractions that may come, Father, so that we can focus on you. We thank you and we love you. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Brother Hank, you got any else? Yeah, about 13 or 14. Right. Well, we're on list. I'm so I'm so happy to see this thing. I ate it in my hand. I was reading it. <laughs> that was more than 13. Everybody was like, I'm glad that wasn't on the list. <laughs> All right, so it's real it's real simple. I've had about three here. Uh Blue River Center. Ketchup. Uh wow, I just came on, did it? Ketchup. Uh, I think we're doing pretty good and fill us what it's worth for some ketchup and some other stuff down at the Christian Life Center. I don't know if it's still on the car or not, but anyway. For next month, we're having green beans. Green beans, beans, yes, ma'am. Extra green beans? Just extra just, green beans? Just so green we got, beans is okay. what we're having next month. Well, let's make them extra green beans and come up with some extra, okay? Okay. All right, so. Uh, if y'all fill it up, I'll take it. <laughs> that's right. I told Larry to bring his truck today. Anyway, <laughs> need that. Uh, no, continue. He yeah, he's got his muscles too. Lady brought your muscles. <laughs> need to continue to donate to the Calhoun Pregnancy Center. It's always a, it's a constant need. Uh, where is Louise? Because I feel like there's something else we need to be collecting for this month, and she's not noticeable, so she must be out in the back or something. So we'll, we'll move on. All right, and then the last thing here, uh, a couple more things. We need more fire members. I don't know. The last fire practice last Sunday was pretty full. Do we still need more? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Last, last Sunday, the attendance was a little down. When the choir got up there to sing, I'm like, they kept coming out. I'm like, who are we singing to? There was like three people left, you know. <laughs> but anyway, it was, a, it was a good time. The choir is a good time. Excuse me. Um, but we can always use more more people. And it's good to see all the people here this morning, too, the ones that have been out and, and such. And people all right, now, last thing. This afternoon, or after church service, if, we was going to do this last week, but we weren't quite prepared paperwork-wise. But we're going to have a conference, church conference. We haven't had one in a while. And so 15, maybe, I doubt it takes 20 minutes, but 15 to 20 minutes, if you could, please stay and stay for that. Uh, a lot of effort. We need to get back into doing that because uh, we need to, you know, stay on top of church business and things that need to be done. So. And that's it on my end. So, Mr. David, is she? I don't know. Wake up. Chase up. Oh, I don't know, Chase will come back up. He's saving his joints. He's saving his joints. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good to see you folks today. Y'all ready to sing? Amen. Good. We're going to be singing Let's Just Praise the Lord. And then the next one will be Jesus. What a wonder you are. Let's stand and listen.
card number 10. Hymn number 10 if you're using the hymnal. And if not, just read the words off of that. I can still hear George Beverly Shade in my head singing that song. Can y'all do that? He made it famous. Okay, here we go. <laughs> oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds my hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the
sing. Mm. All right, if we'll have two ushers come up, and we'll take up this one as often. take care of you if you use the hymnals number 64. Jesus, you know that one? 
Let's stand and really pump this one out, okay? Here we go.
water you turned into wine yes. You opened the eyes of the blind There's no one like you There's none like you Into the darkness you shine yes. And out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you There's none like you Cause our God is greater And our God is stronger And God you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome in power Our God Our God darkness you shine and out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you there's none like you cause our God is greater and our God is stronger and God you are higher than any other and our God is healer another sermon for another time but um, we see in the Bible that uh, Jesus expects us to pray and he expects us to fast as Christians and you got to do it uh, there's a proper way to pray and there's a proper way to fast if you don't know the proper way to fast don't do it learn how to do it and then if the Lord's leading you to do it then do it um, so be in a Prayer for the revival um, for this community, for our church, and for 
the preachers that are going to come. Now, if you want to write this down, I'll take just a second to tell you some names, and I'll miss them again later. If you want to write this this down, that the first preacher we're going to have, and every service is going to be at 6.30 at night, okay? So it's going to be at 6.30 p.m. The first preacher we're going to have on Sunday night is going to be Bryson Fricks. All right, Bryson Fricks. He's 23-year-old. He, he preached for the men's breakfast. Um, the Lord's using him in, in, in many different ways, and he's excited to come and, and preach to us, and I can't wait to have him. Bryson Fricks, Sunday night. On Monday night, uh, we're having Josh Parker. Josh Parker's the pastor at Cool Springs Baptist Church in Chatsworth. He's a pastor uh, buddy of mine and and uh, he's been a great help and prophet to the ministry and he's uh, he's been doing a lot of praying for our church and we appreciate that and I pray for them every day. Uh, Josh Parker Monday night. On Tuesday night we're going to have Shane Perry. Shane Perry is the pastor at Heritage Baptist Church and uh, and <clears throat> You know, he's one of the, a, a great mentor for me, and he always has been, and, and that's where, that's the church I come from, he is my pastor, he's still, I, I still consider him my pastor, I go to him from help and prayer, and things like that, he's excited to come and preach for us as well, and then on Wednesday night, y'all gotta deal with me again, so, <laughs> so, uh, but I'm excited to, to preach and and, um, and I'll be preaching that Sunday morning too and I'm very excited about it I know that the Lord has put this on my heart and gave me peace about it I know that he's in it I know he's got his hands on it let's continue to pray for him and for that uh, pray for the preachers excuse me pray for the preachers and pray for us as well alright if you want to turn in your Bibles to uh, we're going to be in the book of Matthew, chapter 13. This message is going to be a little different than uh, any other message that you've heard me preach. We're only going to be going over one scripture and uh I believe that the Lord's put it on my heart. I ask that you pray for me because the Lord's uh, put a burden on my heart this morning. I truly feel, feel like there is, uh, I, I feel like maybe even every single one of us, there's decisions that we need to make for the Lord and we might be right on the edge of those decisions or we may not even know what they are just yet. But I feel like there's decisions that each and every one of us need to make for the Lord. And I just... I pray and hope that the Holy Spirit will, will convict and I hope that people will respond in obedience uh, this morning and, uh, and that uh, we'll be able to glorify the Lord and that we'll be able to walk out of here a little closer to the Lord than when we came in here. That's the main goal is to walk out of here closer to the Lord. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 13 and we're going to uh, read verse 33. It's, I said one scripture, but I meant two. Okay. I can't count sometimes. All right. So, let's get to Matthew 13, 33. The Bible says, Another parable spake he unto them. The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leavened. Let's turn over to Galatians. We're going to look in Galatians chapter 5, and, uh, and, and Gala you'll find Galatians, it comes after uh, 2 Corinthians, and it's just going to be a real short verse, but it's also dealing with leaven. Galatians chapter 5 verse 9 says, A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. So we see in one scripture. We see in one script, we see right there that it's used in a negative connotation. And she uses a, a negative connotation. But the scripture I read first is talking about the kingdom of heaven. It's like unto heaven. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you in Jesus' name. We ask for your help this morning. 
Lord, I ask that you would just uh, move me aside, Father, Lord, and that you would use me as a tool. Lord, that I would be obedient and only say what you would have me to say, Father, Lord. I pray for each and every one of us in here this morning, Lord, and I ask that you just please take care of us, Father, Lord. And Lord, I thank you for all that you've done. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you the honor, praise, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. We see that in chapter 13, Jesus was speaking and teaching in parables. Jesus was the greatest teacher that ever lived. Jesus was the greatest preacher that ever lived. And here in, in, in <laughs> chapter 13, we see that uh, Jesus uses small things. Jesus is using small things. I want you to recognize that. That first we see the parable of the sower. The parable of the sower and, it's, and, and the small insignificant thing about that is the soil. It's the seed and, and the soil. And we see it's not about the sower. It's about the soil. There it all depends on the soil. Next we see here the wheat and the tares. The wheat and the tares look exactly the same. There's no difference in the wheat and the tare. The only thing that makes them different is in the wheat there is that seed or, or, or whatever you may call it. And that is a little tiny insignificant thing but it makes the difference between the wheat and the tare. And we see that we see the parable of the mustard seed. And, and uh, Jesus speaks of faith of the size of a mustard seed. He's talking about, in this scriptures that we just mentioned, we're talking about the leaven. Little tiny leaven that goes in dough. Something very small and insignificant. Today I want to preach on the message and the title would be called the power of a little leaven. The power of a little leaven. Jesus wasn't interested in the greatest, largest, popular, accepted by society, top of the totem pole type of things or people, but was interested in the small things. And the world will tell you that it takes great faith in order to manifest the power of God. And people will tell you that in order to, to get healing or in order to, uh, for prayers to be answered, that it takes great faith in God. And that's the furthest thing from the truth. And that's, the lie, that's a lie straight from the pits of hell. But Jesus speaks of mountain moving faith the size of a mustard seed. I want you to realize it ain't about being uh, big and mighty. That Jesus is not interested in how big and mighty you can get, but how small you can get. That John the Baptist said that I must decrease and he must increase. The world will tell you that, it, that in order to rise to the top, in order to become first, that you have to step over people and that you have to be selfish and that you have to put yourself first. And the world will tell you that uh, if, if you're being nice and you're being unselfish, then that's compared to uh, letting people use you. And that's compared, that, that's compared to uh, being used by other people. And people say, you know, not let people use you like that. That you ought to put yourself first. And that you deserve more. And you deserve better things than that. But Jesus tells us that the marks of be, that, that unselfishness and, and that loving our neighbor, that's the marks of being an obedient Christian. We see that in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 22, Jesus gives the command, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 20, Jesus says, The last shall be first, and the first shall be last. Does it ever occur to you 
that all the things that the devil will try to get you to believe in the worldly system and the order to, to get to the top of the food chain in the worldly system is backwards and reversed when it comes to the kingdom of God. And when Jesus was used parables, he would use these things. And, and you know that Jesus had a way of using earthly things and situations to bring about spiritual truths. Nobody has ever walked in the will of God 10 feet tall with their, with their chest bowed out. That as a matter of fact, if you're going to be walking in the will of God, it's going to take you down on your knees, down on your face, humbling yourself before the Lord Jesus Christ. Many times when we hear uh, the, uh, the leaven preached, I've heard it in a negative connotation. And, but here we see that it says that the kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven. doesn't say the kingdom of hell. It says the kingdom of heaven. I'll tell you what I see here. I preach for a little bit on this. The principle of the leaven. I see here that there's a principle of leaven. Number one, the thing that I want to mention first is sin. Is sin. The first thing I'm going to preach on is sin. That we can see that, that there's a principle of leaven in relation to sin. I want to explain the leaven to you for just a second. Once the leaven, the leaven, a little tiny piece of leaven, once that leaven has been injected into the dough, it becomes hidden. You cannot see it. And just because you cannot see it does not mean that it is not working. Does not mean that it is not doing its job. And we need to understand that sin works in our lives in the same way. That nobody has a light bulb go off in their head overnight one day. And they say, I got a good idea. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to wreck my life. And I'm going to destroy everything that I have. And I'm going to turn on everything that God's given me. I think today I'll commit suicide. Or, or I think today I'll, I'll get on drugs, quit my family, move to the streets, and wreck my life and, and run from God. Don't start that way. Sin don't start out like that. James 1.14 says, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. <clears throat> Verse 15 says, listen to this. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. That sin will not stop until it reaches death. Well, let's realize that. That the devil is so subtle. He's so very wise. Offering us something so Small and so harmless and no immediate repercussions and, and it's not going to hurt you. As a matter of fact, it's going to make you feel good. And, and, and he never changes tactics. It's worked. It works so good. It's worked all along on us that he never changes. He knows you better than any horoscope on the internet that you, that, that mass. He knows you better than then your, your family and your mama and daddy and the devil knows you better than all of those people and he knows your weaknesses. He knows everything that he needs to know in order to something so subtle to put it in your life and to let it grow and let it work. And that's how the devil gets to us. The devil will have you spending more time in your Bible than you ever have searching for scriptures that will justify that little bitty sin that he dropped off in your life so that you don't have to stop doing it. It's not that big a deal that, that everybody's doing it and, and that he'll have you spending more time in the Bible than you ever have in your life searching for those scriptures. Sin makes you stupid, don't it? It does. 
People say, Pastor, you ought not say that. Right? But it does. Sin makes us really dumb. And, and if you would just step back and be like, well, what are you doing? What do you think you are getting away with carrying around the presence of a holy God living inside of you? What is your problem? Well, we don't, we don't think that. We're, we're giving in to the desire. And we're giving in to the lust. And we try to justify our sin uh, using the Bible. You know, it, it makes us so dumb sometimes. And we'll go to the Bible to try to justify it. And, and, and I know we don't do this, but it's like, well, I don't got my name beside it. Guess it ain't talking to me. You know, and so we just continue on as if it don't even matter. Sin starts out so small. Just a little lust. A little thought. When that lust had conceived, it brings forth sin. And that little bitty sin in your life will not stop until it brings forth death. And you need to know that you have an enemy in Satan that comes by your life every single day trying to hide a little bitty sin in your life. You ain't going to see it. They ain't going to see it. Nobody's going to know. I'm just going to put this right here. It'll feel good for a little while. You can quit. Put it on. You come back whenever you want to. And nobody's going to know about it. This is just going to be between you and me. That's what the devil says. And we make deals with the devil. All the while, we got the presence of, the whole, of a holy God living inside of us. The one true God of the universe that died for those sins that we're making dealings with, with the devil. No big deal. It's just as long as it's little. What's the point? This is this is something that this is something that blinds us. Right here. Here's the thing. You think you've got control of it. You think you have control of it. It don't have control of me. But I have control of it. I'll tell you about the little leaven and the bread. That bread don't got control of that little leaven. The leaven's got control of the bread. The leaven is what spreads throughout the bread. It's the greatest mistake that we make as humans is we, we, we think that we have control. We think that until it starts to spread, it's still it, until it starts to rise, until it starts busting at the, the seams in it, and, and all of a sudden we can't control it. And all of a sudden it starts leaking out everywhere. And our family is affected, our wives and our kids and, and our co-workers and, and the people in church are affected by it. And it's still hidden. They still don't see it, but they're affected by it, just as we get affected by it. You know, a lot of times I, I have seen people in church. And don't get me wrong, I, I fall, sure. And I fell. And I fall, but when I thank the Lord, it's by Him and Him alone. And every time I have fallen, um, since I've came back to the Lord, every time that I fall, I fall forward and I get back to where I need to be. But have you ever seen somebody that was just a joy to be around and and they're so happy all the time and and they got it figured out you know and uh and then all of a sudden uh you don't nobody knows it but the devil just drops off a little sin that nobody knows about and they keep it hidden uh but before long their attitude starts to change. And the way that they see the church starts to change. And the way that they see the people in the church starts to change. And and the way and, and they get they don't like sitting under the preaching of sin anymore. And and, and I know that that uh, I know what preaching on sin does for the Christian. 
You understand? I don't sit up here and, and, and do it for, for anything. Okay? I've already had to hit, get on my knees before a holy God, ask for forgiveness, and Lord, I can't preach this message without your forgiveness. So I don't want you to think that I'm standing up here, some hot, uh, some holy roller. But I will never understand how a Christian can can be bothered by the preacher preaching on sin. I don't understand that. You're saved. How did you get saved? You had to know that you were a sinner. You had to get. You had to receive that before. But we get to a point, that person gets to a point, we might have been there before. They no longer like to sit under the preaching of sin. They, they, they start to miss church a little bit. And, and before you know it, they, they don't think that nobody can tell. But everybody knows that something's going on with that person. Because that's what sin does. It's just as the leaven is placed in the bread, that leaven changes the bread. And just as sin comes in your life, that sin will grow and expand and it will change you on the outside. And everybody will see it before you do. And when everybody starts to notice, they get worried because a true Christian loves the brethren. And we, when we see somebody slipping, we get worried about them. We want to, hey, how are you doing? How are things going? Well, that person in sin starts thinking that everybody's against them. They start thinking that everybody's turned on them. Let me tell you something. When you get to that place, the destruction of sin is in full process. It'll take away your family. It'll take away your job. And it'll take away everything that you have in your life. And, uh, and I'm going to be honest with you. And I'm going to tell you something this morning. I love God too much. And I love my family too much. And I love this church too much. To let a little tiny sin ruin everything good that God has done in my life. And I'm telling you right now, if you love what, if you love the goodness of God and all, and you recognize and realize all the good that God's done in your life, you need to get rid of that little sin before it's too late. There's no little sin worth it. None of it's worth it. Ruining your marriage, or ruining your uh, your relationship with your kids, and ruining your life, and ruining your um, attendance at church, it, that's a big deal. Your attendance at this church is a big deal. No sin's worth losing all that over. I'm going to ask you a question this morning. What is that little sin that's hidden in your life? What is that little thing in your life that's keeping you from making decisions for the Lord? It starts out so small, Something you can uh, start reasoning with right away. And, and I've heard this before. Well, these pills are prescribed to me so I can take a little extra if I need to to, to knock the edge off. And, and well, church so-and-so down the road, that preacher says that you can have uh, one or two drinks each day as long as it's just one or two drinks uh, each day and, and I'm going to tell you something alcohol is a sin and you might say well preacher you ought not be preaching on that because alcohol is very normalized these days and, and, you'll, and people will leave the church and they'll walk out on you but I'm telling you it's a sin and, and it's, the Bible says that drunk, drunkards shall not inherit the kingdom of God and that's what the Bible says and you're not going to get burnt unless you play with fire you play with fire you'll get burnt and there's a there, there's a snake handling church in Tennessee and that preacher if you want to call him that will say well if I just handle this snake and it bites me and I die I know that it was my time to go that God wanted me to come home let me tell you something it, 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 that's a deadly poisonous snake if it bites you and you die, then that means you were handling a snake you shouldn't have been dealing with. If you ain't handling a snake, you ain't going to get bit. You don't become a drunkard overnight. It starts off by one or two drinks every day. 
That's, you know, that's called, it's called tempting God. It's called tempting God. You are not tempt God with your inheritance of his kingdom. I've been there. No better than nobody in here. I've been there. It's not worth it. Sin starts out so small you can't see it working. Proverbs 14, 12 says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And, 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 and I want to mention this because I because it's happened to me before and I was talking to somebody and, and they had an alcohol problem. That's a big deal. Look, I'm, I, I'm preaching on this. I'm not trying to beat you up. For it. That's a big deal. Like That's a real problem uh, that people deal with. Like depression and things like that. And, and, and these are real things that we deal with. And, and I'm praying this morning for restoration. I'm praying this morning that decisions will be made for the Lord. I'm not trying to beat nobody up over that. And I'm never going to sit up here and judge you uh, for things like that. that, that but I, the goal here is restoration. But you know, I, I was talking to somebody about alcohol one time. I want you to understand this. They could tell me everything the Bible had to say about alcohol. They couldn't tell me nothing it had to say about salvation. That's a problem. That's a problem. There's no sin in this world worth losing what, we, what God's given us over. I think God's got big plans for us. Let me tell you something. Each and every person in here is going to take each and every one of us. And I'll never forget this picture that I see right here. Because I believe in, in a short no time, these seats are going to be filled. And I may not ever see this picture again. But I, I remember who was here. And I remember who prayed for the Lord to move. And I remember who made decisions for the Lord. And who humbled themselves. And who became small. And let the Lord work in them. The next thing I want to look at. Salvation. I want to look at salvation. The principle of leaven we also see in salvation. Now it is only through the power and ability of the leaven that the dough starts to rise. Without the leaven, the dough lays there lifeless, useless, nasty. Nobody's ever ate unleavened bread and said, I want to write home about this. <laughs> you try some leaven bread if that's the case. You know, you ever hear me say, man, that's some good unleavened bread, and it's probably because my wife made it. <laughs> and she knows what she's doing in the kitchen, so that ain't gonna happen. She that woman can cook. Unleavened bread ain't no good. It's the it's the leaven that makes it good. It's the leaven that makes it delicious. It's the leaven that causes it to rise. And it's only through the power of the leaven does that meal become something and rise. Without the leaven, it's just nothing. It takes that the leaven comes from outside of the bread. You understand that? It's an outside from the bread. And the Bible says that we're we were dead in our trespasses and sin, that we were wandering around lifeless, headed towards a devil's hell that is also lifeless, until God said, uh, I, I'm going to give my only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That Jesus said, I come to bring you life and life more abundantly. And Andrew, you remember when, when you tried reaching up and when you couldn't reach up far enough, that, that God reached down and, and you called out on a, on a thrice holy God and He reached down and he, he saved you and He came to you when you couldn't go to Him and He stepped down because you couldn't step up and He made Himself lowly for us. I'm going to tell you something, and, and, and this is all glory to God. You, you know me, but it, this is all glory to God. But God has done a work in me that, that I can't, I don't know how he did it. I don't know, uh, I don't know the, the details behind it. But all I know is that 
Uh, when I got saved, and the Holy uh, Spirit moved into me. Hell moved out. He said, this has got to go. This has got to go. This can't stay here. I got plans for you. I got, I got a family plan for you. And these things got to go because they're going to destroy your life. And when the Holy Ghost moved in, it changed me from the inside out. Not because of who I am, but because of who He is. And if you'll let the Holy Spirit move inside of you this morning, that He can change your life as well. And this is what I don't understand sometimes, is that, I, that, that people will try to convince me that they're a Christian. I praise God and it's all glory to God. I don't have to convince nobody that I'm a Christian. Because the God of the universe... That what's living on the inside of me is the Lord of Lord, Lords and the King of Kings. He's the beginning and the end. The Alpha and Omega, everlasting to everlasting. The Lily in the Valley, the bright morning star, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. That's who's living on the inside of me. And if you have that living on the inside of you, things will change. It will change you from the inside out. And you won't have to convince nobody that you're a Christian. Amen. Amen. All glory to God for that. If what's on the inside of you is not enough to change who you are, if it's not enough to transform you, what makes you think it's going to be enough to transport you? We need to be real with ourselves this morning. If it's not enough to get you excited about church, and about eternal life and about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, if it doesn't get you. And I know there's times where, where we get dull. I understand that. And that's what, that's what a revival will do us good with. And I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about that at all. Ever. And if it, what you have on the inside of you is not enough to get you excited about the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and if it, if only on Sunday is the only time that you ever praise the Lord. That if you if you ain't never been riding down a road. And you put a, a good song on. That will get you excited. And it will get you shouting. And, and, and then the next thing you know. It will have you crying. And it will have you boo-hooing. And, and if, if, you, if you don't know how to praise going down the road. Or walking through the house. And singing hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, if, you, if you can't ever get a praise out. Except for when you come into church and, and all you do is just sit there and that's all your praise is. If, that, if what's on the inside of you ain't enough to get you excited, I'm telling you, it'd be a good morning to come down here and pour your heart out to the Lord. Realize what's living on the inside of you. We're going to move on to the last point and then we'll close uh, and and, it, and it's not going to take very long, Brother Jeff, if you want to go ahead and get on the piano and we'll, and we'll get ready for an invitation at the end. <coughs> Next thing is, uh, it's really a two and one. Sanctification and service. Sanctification and service. See the principle of the level when it comes to the Christian service and sanctification. This is going to be very short, and, and, and it, you'll see why. There's not much to say about it. When once the leaven, that tiny leaven, is placed inside the dough, and it's heated up, that little leaven don't take on the characteristics of the dough. But the dough takes on the characteristics of the leaven. That, that there is at an actual, and I'm not trying to be scientific because I, I messed that up too, but it, actually there is a chemical reaction that happens on the inside of that dough, and the leaven overtakes every single molecule, a molecule, see I messed it up, of the dough, and it overtakes it, and, and it becomes the bread, and it's what transforms the bread and causes it to rise and makes it complete. And the Word of God and the Holy Spirit does not conform to the Christian, but it is the Christian that conforms to the Word of God. 
Everything that I've said in here this morning, it's not about getting uh, finding a, a, a God and, and creating a God that's going to uh, do whatever we want them to do. And, and we'll let that little sin just sit there. And Lord, if you just don't let it get real big. And, and I'm here to tell you that the Christian <laughs> is to conform to the Word of God. And every single one of us in here has work to do. And every single one of us in here can grow more from where we're at. This ain't just a, well, I hope, oh, what's his name over there is listening to this part. This is every single one of us in here that we all can grow and we all can, can conform ourselves to the Word of God until we are complete. Let me tell you something. We ain't complete until He calls us home. We've been, we've been justified. We've been saved. We, we're, we are being sanctified right now. And when the Lord comes back to get us, we'll be glorified in our bodies. Till that glorification, we are not complete. Amen? Amen? Still work to do. We need that mercy and grace. We talked about it Wednesday. Uh, Miss Benita, I tried really hard not to preach Wednesday's message in this. Because, I mean, you can. You can tie it in right along with it. I've been preaching a lot on sanctification here lately. And well, guess what? If, if, if you're saved, if all of you are saved, I, we can't get you saved again. If you're saved, you're saved. Now it's sanctification time. It's growing time. It's maturing in the Word. A little step at a time. Maturing in the Word. The Holy Spirit comes and lives on the inside of you. He'll change you. He'll make it. When you need, when, you, when, when He's got a service plan for you, or whatever it may be, at, with your co workers and and your employees and, and whatever it may be, that's your mission field. And the only way that you're going to be successful in that mission field is if you conform to the Word and the Holy Spirit is the one that does the, the preparing you for that. The only way I can preach is if the Holy Spirit prepares me and then preaches. That's the only way I can preach. But He'll do it. Without the leaven, the dough is no good. But with eleven, the dough is delicious. It's good. I don't know if you've ever had uh, a good piece of uh, leaven bread from the Cracker Barrel with some butter slapped all over it, and you get ready for some brown gravy. Y'all know where I'm getting at. It's good. What it does, it makes it good, and, and that's what the Lord does to us. He makes us good, not because of who we are, because of who He is. And I'm going to close with this. The thermostat and thermometer. I don't know what you call it. But you might have heard me talk about this before. Are you a thermostat Christian or are you a thermometer Christian? A thermometer changes with the environment. The environment tells the thermometer what it, it, it should do. And, it, and, it, and the thermometer conforms to the environment. But a thermostat changes the environment. And if you got the Holy Spirit in you, when you go into an environment, are you conforming to that environment? Or is that environment conforming not to you, but to the Lord Jesus Christ? Is it, are you changing the environment? I, I believe with all my heart that there's decisions that need to be made for the Lord. I don't know what they are, and I'm not going to try and figure them out. And what God's called me to do. But I believe that there's decisions that I believe that some of us are right on the edge of those decisions that need to be made for the Lord. And, uh, and if there's anything in your life that's hindering you, uh, 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 it'd be a good time to come up here and get rid of it. Nothing's worth letting it continue on and spreading and growing. And, and I want to tell y'all that I love you. I thank you for your prayers. I pray for... Uh, all of you each and every day. If you know somebody you want to pray for, you come on up and pray for them. If, if you, uh, Lord, I need to get saved, or Lord, I need to get this out of my life, you come on up and uh, and you pour your heart out to the Lord. Let's go to the Lord of Prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for your word, Lord, and I thank you for all it's helped me with. Lord, I pray that you help these people.
Father, Lord, each and every one of them, Lord, I pray that you'd convict their hearts. I pray that they would respond in obedience, Father, Lord. Lord, uh, we know that, that sin doesn't work on us, Father, and it's not going to stop until it brings forth death and destruction. Lord, I pray that the man in here would stand up for his family. Lord, I pray that, that the wife or the mother in here will stand up for her children. Father, Lord, I pray, dear God, Lord, that you would move in this place, Lord, and do only what you can do. And, Lord, I thank you and we we'll praise you and give you all the honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Be in prayer for our Sunday nights, and it's coming up fast. And I want to just do things to do things, but like Cam says, we ain't got to talk to the Lord into Sunday nights. I think He's willing, but let's uh, let's do it for the right reasons and get our heart hearts prepared and excited to serve the Lord on Sunday nights. Well. Hope to see everybody here again on Wednesday night. Um, if you have anything at all that you want to pray or talk about. Uh, my door's always open. You can come up to me at any time. I'm an open book, and, and uh, Eric, anything will be confidential. And, and I'm here for you, and I love you, and I thank you. And, uh, and we're going to close with our uh, chorus. Okay.